You hired Mr. Manchin first as assistant U.S. attorney in 1997, correct? Uh, I'm not sure of the date, but I did hire him as an assistant U.S. attorney here in Washington, D.C. And would it surprise uh, you to know that he is a political contributor to President Obama's campaign and indeed served as a volunteer in Obama for America and assisted in the vetting of potential vice presidential candidates? Uh, I am confident that he has the ability, the capacity to investigate this case in a nonpartisan, independent, thorough, and aggressive way. Well, I would suggest the question that that raises by your answer is whether you have the independence and ability to conduct the investigation if, in fact, all of this comes back through you and given your uh, track record. I just want to go over. Well, my uh, track record, I think, a, is consistent. I didn't ask you a question. Well, no, you I, made I will, it. I will give you a chance to respond in a well, moment. Well, my record, I think, I'll stand on, and I have shown a capacity to uh, investigate people within this administration. We have brought leak cases. Let's focus on those. We have brought. No, let's let's not people. let's not filibuster the time. Let me talk about your record. You misled Congress in February 2011 and claimed that there never had been a gun walking program, and then had to retract that in November 2011. You misled Representative Issa in May 2011, saying you did not learn about the Fast and Furious program until the spring of 2011. And then you had to admit to Senator Grassley that you learned about those tactics in January of 2011. You claimed in a press conference in September 2011 you had no knowledge of the Fast and Furious gun walking program. While it's clear that your inner circle, your high-level Department of Justice employees, received briefings and memos on fast and furious gun walking, including Lanny Brewer, Deputy AG Grindler, and others in early 2010, you claim that uh, the fast and furious wiretap applications did not detail gun walking tactics. I've read them. Senator Sessions has read them. And Senator Grassley obviously has read them. Yet they do raise plenty of details to raise a red flag about this tactic. You have defied the uh, lawful and legitimate uh, oversight responsibilities of the House of Representatives and of the Senate. You've uh, resisted uh, producing documents. You've produced about 7,600 documents out of a pool of at least 80,000 documents that would be responsive. And you failed to respond to my letter of August 2011 where I asked you about gun walking tactics that occurred in my state. So 16 months after Fast and Furious was been uncovered and Brian Terry lost his life in the service to his country uh, at, the, at the hands of a drug cartel member who shot him using a weapon that was allowed to walk under this program, there has been zero accountability at the Department of Justice. You won't appoint a special prosecutor in the face of a potential conflict of interest. You won't tell the truth about what you know and when you knew it on Fast and Furious, you won't cooperate with a legitimate congressional investigation. You won't answer my questions about gun walking in Texas. You won't take any responsibility for the failures of your inner circle. And you won't acknowledge what your top aides knowingly misled Congress about over eight months. And you won't hold anyone accountable. So Mr. Attorney General, I'm afraid we've come to an impasse. Uh, the leaking of classified information represents a major threat to our national security, and your office faces a clear conflict of interest, yet you won't appoint a special counsel. You won't support a truly independent investigation, and you won't take the threat seriously. Meanwhile, you still resist coming clean about what you knew and when you knew it with regard to Operation Fast and Furious. You won't cooperate with a legitimate congressional investigation, and you won't hold anyone, including yourself, accountable. Your department blocks states from implementing uh, attempts to combat voter fraud in short, you violated the public trust, in my view, and by uh, uh, failing and refusing to perform the duties of your office. So, Mr. Attorney General, it's more with uh, sorrow than, uh, uh, than regret uh, than anger that I would say that you leave me no alternative but to join those that call upon you to resign your office. Americans deserve an Attorney General who will be honest with them. They deserve an Attorney General who will uphold the basic standards of political independence and accountability. You've proven time and time again, sadly, that you're unwilling to do so. The American people deserve better. They deserve an attorney general who is accountable and independent. They deserve an attorney general who puts justice before politics. And it's my sincere hope that President Obama will replace you with someone who is up to that challenge. Well, Mr. Attorney General, you certainly have the, the right to respond to that. The senator from Texas has accused you of perjury, which is a criminal offense. Uh, I realize that his 
I remember his strong support of one of your predecessors, uh, um, Attorney General Gonzalez. I had a different view of, of that. I felt that you were a more appropriate person to be Attorney General, so feel free to respond. Yeah, uh, with all due respect, uh, Senator, there's so much that's factually wrong with the premises that you started your statement with, uh, you know, it, I, it's, it's almost breathtaking in its inaccuracy, so I, I, but I will, I'll simply leave it at that. Uh, 